The Biden administration announced this week that they're in support of a TikTok ban. Instagram has decided to cancel the bonus program that allowed creators to make money off reels. And YouTube Shorts has chosen not to change their monetization policy despite receiving backlash that it's hard to achieve for smaller channels. Overall, it's been a pretty rough week for short form content creators. However, all that being said, short form content has been on a downward spiral for a while now. TikTok released a new feature to replace the creator fund called the TikTok Creativity Program, which you can only earn money from if your videos are longer than one minute, which for many creators, this was a shocking move because that's not really short form anymore. Ad money isn't paying out as much because a lot of companies aren't paying for ads anymore because of the recession and the creator economy isn't thriving like a lot of people thought it would. We'll get into all that, but this is a loaded topic. So strap in, viewer. We're just getting started. I know that everyone's talking about TikTok getting banned right now, but we're going to run with the assumption that TikTok's not going to get banned. And that's not just me as a creator hoping that it won't. Literally a third of the US, 138 million people use it for at least 90 minutes a day. To compare, Netflix has only 74.2 million users in the US and Canada. It'd be like all of a sudden taking away all of television or something. Like It'd be political suicide if they did that. I think worst case scenarios, they make major changes to their privacy policy and maybe the app will look a little different but i don't think it'll be banned entirely i might be completely wrong and we'll look back and laugh but let's just assume that it continues down the path that it was going so let's start with the benefits of short form content and why it blew up like it did in the first place. We'll flash back to 2018 when TikTok was still deeply in its cringy dance focused roots. At this point, people were tired of seeing the same things on Instagram. With most memes just being screenshots from Twitter or Tumblr, or if it's a video, then it's just a clip from a TV show or movie. It was clear that a lot of viewers thought that Instagram was dying. As a creator, growing on Instagram sucked at this point. You just hear the same BS about using the right hashtags to get on the explore page that no one even used anyway. YouTube was huge and growing, but the big Barriers of entry kept getting higher and higher as people like Mr. Beast raised the standard to basically television level. It also wasn't easy to find content that you wanted to watch because it was riddled with clickbait and the recommendation system wasn't good at recommending new content. There was a gap in the market, not just for creators who wanted to get discovered, but also for viewers that wanted something more. And that's where TikTok started to grow steadily at the end of 2019, where people started to see it as more than just a dancing app for teens. People would make funny videos that would end up on those meme accounts on Instagram. The use this sound feature on TikTok also allowed memes to turn into trends that people would use to make their own funny Video. Cut to the start of 2020 and well something happened? Everyone's stuck at home and they have nothing to do but scroll endlessly on their phone. All social media platforms experience a huge surge, but especially TikTok. The accessibility for viewers to scroll endless content made for them and for creators to easily make a new video made it the perfect place to be. This is when I started creating content. It was a great way to communicate with the world and you felt like you accomplished something when you posted a video. If you look on the profile, what are the main things you see there? Your followers, following, and your total likes. It was fun to watch the numbers go up and it gave everyone the dopamine hit that they needed at the time. For the next two years, Instagram tried to keep up by releasing Reels, which was met with mixed reviews, and YouTube eventually released Shorts. Both of these meant to rival TikTok, but this was when the first cracks started the show. August 4th, 2022. A TikToker named Brody Wellmaker releases a short film called ADXM. The film costed $15 on Patreon when it first came out and he promoted it all over his TikTok account, which had over 20 million followers. The film also featured stars like Call Me Chris, who had over 40 million followers, and It's Evan Williams, who had almost 2 million. Now those are some insanely big numbers, and all these people were some of the most well-known creators on the platform. However, in the first week, less than 100 people actually paid to watch it. Now the creator Brody Wellmaker was furious by this and a lot of people have already made videos about his reaction so i'm not going to talk as much about that but just looking at the numbers he himself has 20 million followers so even if 0.01 percent not one percent 0.01 percent of his followers paid to watch his movie that would be 20,000 people factor in that there are other big tiktokers in this too that's a shockingly low amount of people and it led a lot of short form content creators including myself to realize your followers don't really give a shit about you. Now, of course, there are a lot of factors that went into this specifically. For one, most of the people in it make comedic content and have funny personalities online. But ADXM is a drama that hits some heavy topics that their audience wouldn't really connect with if they're expecting something funny. And you might be thinking that this is a common experience for all creators. But let's contrast the short form with long form. And I'll use YouTubers Noel Miller and Cody Ko as examples. These two also make comedic content and they're known for being funny as well. However, throughout their careers, they've also released other serious projects like music videos, 
videos, short films, and other channels. And even though the content was a lot different, they still got a decent amount of their audience to support them. But when you stop and think about it for two seconds, honestly, it makes sense. When you scroll on a short form platform, you're able to see 50 to 100 videos in a minute. Even if I had liked and followed Brody Wellmaker for a couple of his videos, I probably forgot about it in five minutes, let alone an hour later when I'm done scrolling. But then with YouTube, not only are you seeking out the type of content that you want, you're watching five to 10 minutes of it. You're gonna be much more invested in that channel after watching them. Like this video, for example, we're a couple minutes in. I guarantee that if you've watched this far, you're more likely to remember me than somebody who saw one of my 10 second TikToks. I love you, by the way. Thanks for sticking around. And it even goes beyond that, because when you look at the algorithm for short form content, it doesn't care how many followers you have either. I've seen accounts with millions of followers that can't crack a couple thousand views because following somebody doesn't mean that you'll see their content, like at all. It's just another suggestion to the algorithm of what type of content you might want to see. And that's where the fall begins. So honestly, why does this even matter? Well, creators want to build an audience of people that do give a shit about them. Ideally, Brody would release a video and it wouldn't matter what it's about, his followers would watch it because they're invested in him. But that's not the case. Being only a short form creator is not sustainable. And guess what? TikTok has realized that. And that's why they released what I talked about earlier, the TikTok creativity program. Again, this allows creators to get paid, but only if their videos are longer than one minute, which of course is going to lead to longer form content, which to me symbolizes that there are only two possibilities for where TikTok and short form content go from here. Either all these apps release ad tools like YouTube, giving creators the ability to run ads in between or even maybe in the middle of their content, meaning that you could watch a one minute TikTok and get an ad in the middle of it, which would definitely be bad publicity and overall decrease the user experience quite a bit. Or, and I think this is more likely, they'll separate. There'll be a section for longer videos, maybe longer than a minute, and a section for shorter videos. Instagram probably won't do this, they're more picture based, but TikTok definitely could. And I think that that's what YouTube is trying to do anyway, where your account can have both long and short form videos, but they're accessed and monetized in very different ways. So moving forward, what does this mean? Well, if you're a viewer, you might have already noticed your short videos are getting longer. Creators are working to lengthen their content and they'll probably continue doing this. Apps also could just not focus on one thing. TikTok could stay the king of short form content, but they know that won't last forever and they'll have to fit the market. Ultimately, it feels like every app is becoming the same. YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok already have a lot of the same features like stories, live streaming, messaging, tagging, and yes, short form content. If you're a creator, you really can't just be doing one of these things anymore. You have to be doing it all and try your best to make it all work together. But what do you think? Am I wrong? Maybe short form content is the future. Who knows? If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I made a video on influencer mental health. So tap on the screen to watch that and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.